Hello guys, welcome to another review in the new year, BM345 Reviews. Today's review is on Maboroshi. Now basically, this is MAPPA's first original animated film. MAPPA is the studio known for Chainsaw Man. That's all that I know of MAPPA. I know them only because of Chainsaw Man. This film suffers the same way as Netflix treats its animated films. They barely get any marketing at all. They announce them just two months before its release, with only one or more trailers, and then just dump it out of nowhere. Like, pfft, here's your animated movie now on Netflix. Come and stream it with your friends and family. Which is pretty sad, given how Japanese people are treated in the industry, and their hard work is just dumped straight into a streaming service rather in theaters, which makes all of that work a complete slap in the face. So, with Netflix stupidity on not giving marketing to their animated films, and Japanese artists getting treated poorly, let's start the review. So what's this movie about? It's about an ordinary town with people living with their ordinary lives until one day an explosion happened at the factory which caused everything to stop which means that people aren't even living around the present time instead they are living at a pause time. Within all of that happening, there's this one guy who takes care of this woman's sister, which acts like a dog. And then there's this lore happening where if some person gets sad, they'll be eaten by this wolf being. Okay, there's a huge problem with this movie. The way that it's structured. I'm trying to process to what the heck is going on. Which this movie is at least 1 hour and 52 minutes. Even without the credits, this movie is at least 1 hour and 46 minutes long. So you might have think that they should have put a lot of focus within the story. But no, it casts like 3 side plots tied together and it's completely confusing just because how it's structured. It doesn't help that the pacing is atrocious. I honestly paused certain times of the movie, seeing how many minutes were left in the movie, and it's way longer than I thought. This completely affects the romance subplot, which basically, I don't even connect with the characters at all, simply because how this story is structured. Who thought this was a good idea? Do people in Japan think that this is good structure? That everything needs to be slow? Like a snail's pace? This story for this movie is like a roller coaster ride. You think that everything will be simple and easy to follow, right? But once it goes down, then they will reveal some issues within the story. Is by any chance the characters in this movie are good? Kinda. This is also the same issue as the story. There are some characters that I want to feel bad, but due to how it's executed, I don't want to connect to the characters at all. And there's some characters that really, do they really need to be in this movie at all? Let's start off with the main character, Masamori, who looks like a girl, but actually he's a boy. He likes to draw and has this relationship with this girl who I forgot her name, let me just, you know, IMDB the shit out. And then he likes to take care of this wolf girl. This girl acts like a wolf. She's possibly the only good thing that this film could offer. She can be cute or even annoying. Then we have this girl character who's... I don't find her that interesting at all since the only thing that is interesting about her is her backstory, which her people have an error and then her father, she's useless and she gets thrown out. This love story that the main character and this girl character have, which kind of feels forced. I don't feel any connections with them simply because how the story, like I said, is structured very poorly. And then we have this guy 
who's basically the antagonist of the film, who looks like he came right out of Phineas and Ferb. He has to be the most unnecessary character for a film I have ever seen. All he does is just announce the people that everything will be okay and says that they'll need to sacrifice the girl to the gods. Which, why does this film need a villain? Isn't the wolf beings the villain enough? And at the end of the movie, he literally disappears of the story. Like, he literally just poof, never to be mentioned ever again. So, with this movie's convoluted story, is the animation good? Well, it's pretty good to be honest. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to praise at this animation simply because how MAPPA treats their animators, but it feels like they put some decent effort into it. The backgrounds, the character animation, they feel like they're executed very good. If there's something bad I have to say for the animation is that it feels like I've already seen this type of animation before. The character designs feel like they came directly from another anime series but they made some modifications just to make it seem different. It doesn't help that the airwolves kind of remind me of the worm from Suzume. I'm not saying that this is bad animation. I'd say that this is good animation for their first original movie. Is this movie bad? No. Is this movie good? Also no. I think it's pretty mediocre. Maboroshi may have some good animation, but I cannot be saved for his muddled writing, uninteresting characters, and unoriginal designs. It doesn't help that this movie came from a studio that has a toxic work environment. The only purpose that I could see watching this movie is with its visuals. Similar to Michael Bay's Transformers and James Cameron's Avatar, the visual effects are just a distraction from the story of how it's written. If you don't pay attention for its writing, then you might actually enjoy the visuals from this movie. Overall, I'm going to give Maboroshi a 5 out of 10. It could have been way worse. Next time on BM345 Reviews, I'm going to review Orion in the Dark and The Tiger's Apprentice. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.